rheumatoid arthritis is all about the joints. It's right there in the name, right? Wrong. The name is actually very misleading and we can easily overlook all the other ways RA can mess with our bodies. RA can lead to problems in the blood vessels, the skin, the eyes, and even the lungs. And that's what we're going to dive into today. But this isn't just going to be some list of what can happen to the lungs, because that's not what you really need. We're going to also get into how to tell if it's happening to you and what you can do about it. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz, and this is Connected Rheumatology. Let's get started. So let's start with the biggie, interstitial lung disease. Interstitial lung disease, or ILD, is actually not just one disease, but a collection of different varieties of diseases that impact the lungs. Now let's do a quick anatomy lesson so we're all speaking the same language. The lungs are made up of airways, both big and small, blood vessels, and surrounded by a thin lining of tissue called the pleura. The big windpipe airway divides down and down further into our lungs until the airways are small little balloons. These balloons are held together with the tiny blood vessels by tissue that we call the interstitium. So interstitial lung disease is a lung disease that impacts this tissue. The tissue can become inflamed or be scarred or a mix of both. And when these changes happen to the interstitium, our ability to take in air and oxygen worsens, which can lead to a number of different symptoms. So why did I say this one was the biggie? Well, it's the most common and can carry with it some serious implications. Depending on what study you're looking at, ILD can be seen in up to 30% of those with rheumatoid arthritis and many of them won't know they have it. Now, who is most at risk? We know that older men who have more severe flavors of rheumatoid arthritis, who have persistently high CRP levels, which indicates high inflammation, and who smoke cigarettes are most at risk. But truly, anyone with RA can develop this. The most common symptoms are going to be getting short of breath or winded or developing a non-productive cough. If someone with RA is having worrisome breathing symptoms, the tests that we typically do will include a chest x-ray, a CT scan of the lungs, and then pulmonary function tests. Pulmonary function tests are done in a pulmonary lab where they ask you to breathe into a machine. They are then able to take all kinds of measurements and use that information to determine what kind of ILD you have and how much it is impacting your breathing. The best treatment for ILD is to treat the RA and get the overall inflammation as controlled as possible. Now, deciding who to treat is actually the better question and we'll talk about screening for all of these things later on. The second lung condition that can happen in RA is pleural disease. Like ILD, pleural disease is not one thing and actually describes a number of different problems that all stem from that thin layer of tissue that surrounds the lungs, the pleura. When the pleura becomes inflamed, we can develop pleuritis, which can make it difficult to breathe or give us chest pain. Inflamed pleura can also cause fluid to build up in the lung, causing a pleural effusion. This can also make it difficult to breathe, take a deep breath, or breathe comfortably while we're laying down. Now, RA is not the only reason someone may develop pleural disease. Pleuritis and fluid in the lungs can happen for any number of other reasons, but when we have rheumatoid arthritis, we cannot forget about them. So when someone with RA comes in with new trouble breathing or chest pain, we will always want to start with a chest X-ray. We can usually see a pleural effusion or fluid build up in the lungs on a chest x-ray, although we may also need a CT scan. In some cases, if there is a lot of fluid in the lungs, or we're concerned that that fluid actually indicates an infection, we may need to physically remove the fluid. When the fluid is caused by rheumatoid arthritis, giving someone a diuretic to remove the fluid, like you may do for someone who has heart problems, it won't work. So we have to physically go in and remove the fluid with a needle. We call this procedure a thoracentesis. It sounds uncomfortable, and it, it, it is but it can be life-saving and gives your doctors the information they need to make sure it never comes back. 
Similar to ILD, the treatment for pleural disease is to control the RA as best as possible. But different from ILD, we can give extra anti-inflammatory medications like steroids to rapidly bring down the pleural inflammation to get someone feeling better quickly. Now, I'm going to skip over rheumatoid arthritis nodules in the lungs because I have a whole other video on RA nodules where I discuss what they are, where they can be found, and with the lungs being on that list, and what we can do about them. So to learn more about that, I invite you to go watch that video next. And finally, we have infections. This perhaps isn't what you were expecting to hear, but lung infections can be a serious complication for anyone with RA, and it deserves to be discussed. There are many reasons why someone with RA may get a lung infection. The disease itself is an indication of an overactive but ineffective immune system. So anyone with RA or any other autoimmune condition is at risk for infections. In addition to that, many of the medications we use to dampen inflammation can make fighting off infections difficult. Plus, if someone with RA already has ILD, even if it's mild, they are at risk for developing lung infections. Remember, the issue with autoimmunity and infections isn't that it's more likely to get the infection, it's that the immune system is not working at 100%, so it's tougher to fight off that infection. So the risk is actually that the infection will become severe. The symptoms of a lung infection when you have RA are going to be similar to those without RA. Fevers, chills, cough, trouble breathing, they can all be signs. But be mindful that sometimes because of the medications used to treat RA, a full-on fever may not be present as a functioning immune system is required in order for us to mount that fever. Similar to ILD and pleural disease, the first steps would be a chest x-ray and then quickly placed on antibiotics if appropriate. If you've been paying attention, you may have noticed that many with RA lung disease will not have any symptoms at all. So if someone doesn't have symptoms, do we need to go looking for trouble? Well, maybe? The official recommendations released in 2023 suggest that screening for those at high risk makes sense. And again, who's high risk? Generally, anyone with very high inflammation that is not easily calmed, someone who has smoked, or someone who has off-the-charts antibody levels. And what does screening entail? It means moving beyond just a chest x-ray and getting a CT scan and pulmonary function test. Now, this recommendation doesn't feel so much like screening to me, more like, hey, this person has very high levels of inflammation, let me do my job and do a survey and see if there's any other part of them aside from their joints that are being impacted by this inflammation. Because even without the CT scan, I already know I need to get some treatment on board STAT to bring down all this inflammation I see. Finding out if there are any lung issues will just help me decide which treatment to use. To me, the more interesting and more difficult question to answer is what about someone who's doing okay? Maybe they have a flare or two a year, but they're generally stable. Do we need to go hunting for lung trouble in them? And to that, the answer is we don't know. So this is where we really rely on what our patients tell us. Paying attention to your exercise tolerance is key. Were you once able to walk three blocks no problem and now need to rest after just one? And is the reason you need to rest because you can't catch your breath or is it your joints? RA, like all my other autoimmune conditions, can lead to fatigue and it can be difficult to tease out what is being tired and what is being winded. So taking the time to pay attention is worth it. And by the way, if you are thinking, my rheumatologist doesn't even listen to my lungs. Well, first of all, yeah, that sucks. So just ask them next time. But also, take heart, hearing something on our lung exam doesn't correlate well with actual RA lung disease. So again, it's all about how you feel. RA is not just about the joints. The more you can share with your doctor about your entire well-being, the better they will be at looking for sneaky non-joint related issues. Again, if you want to learn more about RA nodules, check out this video next. 
And if you're facing RA or RA complications and are unsure what to do, I'm open for virtual second opinions in Texas, California, Florida, and Tennessee. To learn more about that, you can click the link in the description box. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.